and then the next one which is very very important is to read data from a relational database over jdbc it is not just mysql this approach is applicable to any other relational database but in our case we are demonstrating using mysql okay first thing what you have to do is you have to specify the jar file of your mysql and then only you should be able to use the jdbc url to connect to the mysql database without the jar file you will not be able to use it so in this case if i directly run this it will fail saying that class not found you can see here no suitable driver because when i launch pyspark i did not specify the details about the mysql connector okay so we need to have mysql connector and hence what you can do is while launching pyspark either by using packages with packages you have to give group id artifact id and version it will download from the public repositories or you can use jars and you can specify the fully qualified path of the jar file so in our case we have this under user share java mysql connector java.jar okay this is one thing and also we have to connect to mysql database from the driver program and hence we have to specify driver class path let me check that yeah driver class path and we have to give this mysql details okay and if you want to use as part of pycharm what you are supposed to do is you go to the location where your spark is set up so as part of the program or as part of the project we have integrated this project with spark by going to pre uh, preferences then project structure then we specified the content route and then we have gone into the the relevant spark versions python directory we added it to the content root and then we went into the lib of python and then there is this py4j we have added that also as part of the content root this actually concludes the integration of spark with our project on top of this if you want to use mysql connectors as part of your program so if you want to write uh, or if you want to develop the program which uses the jdbc connector to connect to the remote database and uh, read as part of your spark program what you are supposed to do is you need to go to the location where spark is installed which is nothing but in my case it is nothing but it varsity and then as part of the it varsity there is this Spark 2.3.0 bin Hadoop 2.7. You have to go into that, and there is a directory called Jars. You can double click on this Jars, and you need to make sure the MySQL connector is copied here. Okay, you can just download for MySQL connector 5.1.40 or 41. Download it, and you copy to this location. Okay, I'm showing you the location once again from terminal also, so that you have idea. So I'm in my home directory. In that home directory, I have Spark 2.3.0 bin Hadoop 2.7, which is my base directory of Hadoop. In that, there is JAS directory, and in that JAS directory, we have to copy MySQL connector Java 5141.jar. In that case, the Spark-based applications which are developed using PyCharm understand the connector uh, file, and it will work without any issue. Okay. So as part of this getting started itself let me copy paste the code i will explain this in a moment so there are multiple ways to read data over jdbc either you can say spark.read.format then say jdbc and then you can actually pass options such as url db table user password etc and as part of the url you have to specify the jdbc url and then the database name dot table name and the user using which you are connecting is retail user and the password is itversity okay and if you use spark.read.format you have to use load to finally load the data i have mentioned this when i actually have gone to the aps whenever you use format we use load so that we actually load the data okay and now i can right click on this okay let me delete all these things okay and then let me say orders.print schema and then orders.show in this case we are reading data from remote database into a data frame once it is in data frame we can again process with the apis or spark sql uh, syntax and use as part of our application uh, okay now you can see the first 20 records read from orders table and you can see the uh, data types are inherited from the database order id is of type integer order date is of type timestamp order customer id is of type integer and order status is of type string okay on top of this approach you can also read data by saying orders equal to spark dot read dot jdbc okay so there is the api called jdbc directly and it takes three arguments the first argument is url you can see here url table and then there are additional arguments like column lower bound upper bound num persons etc we will talk about those things at a later point in time okay but we need url and table to read the data so 
and also if you look at the syntax you can also pass a dict which is nothing but properties you can see that it is mentioned as part of curly braces so the properties such as username and password can be passed as properties so from all these arguments we need to specify url which is nothing but this jdbc mysql ms.itwasty.com ms.itwasty.com is the host on which the database is running okay and the second argument is the table which is nothing but retail db dot orders okay and then you can actually pass a dict which contains user retail underscore user and then password itversity okay and then you can save it and then you can specify orders dot print schema orders dot show so if you are familiar with scoop most of the projects which are originally developed using scoop are now being replaced with this approach using jdbc people try to read data from remote databases in, into a data frame and then we can leverage the data frame operations on top of it okay so there is some syntax uh, issues the reason is i have to specify the properties here because it's a keyword argument as we do not specify all other arguments we have to explicitly tell that we are passing properties here otherwise it is assuming uh, as the third column a uh, third argument which is nothing but column but uh, originally we are actually passing properties okay now let me delete this let me save it and let me run this so either either you can use spark dot read dot format and then pass all the options the authentication information table names etc as option and then use load to load data from a remote database into a data frame or you can directly use spark dot read dot jdbc like this where you have to pass url and table name for sure and then you can specify properties on top of these things by default when you load data with this with the, uh, either of the approaches it will create only one partition okay if the table is big even then it will only create one partition if you want to increase the scale a uh, scalability you might have to create a data frame with multiple partitions similar to rdd partitions so if you want to increase the number of partitions there is a property called num partition okay you can specify that here like this num partition is equal to 4 and when you actually specify the num partition is equal to 4 you can also specify the column on which you want to partition we will see that in a moment okay now if you run this the only difference between the previous step and this step is now data will be distributed into four different partitions not just one partition and by default i think it uses the order id to partition the data if you want to customize and if you want to load data with a different field okay so let's say i want to read order items data i am copying this and then i am changing the variable name as order items and the table name also order underscore items and i want to partition the data using column order item order id not the primary key field but the foreign key field to orders okay like if i specify column like this now data will be partitioned based on order item order id and also you can specify the lower bound and upper bound to control uh, the way data is distributed across the fields so when you specify column it is mandatory to specify lower bound and upper bound okay so in this case let's say lower bound equal to 10000 all these have to be passed as strings only like this and then upper bound equal to let's say 20000 okay now to understand how the data will be distributed using this lower bound and upper bound let me write the output into a file so i'm specify order items dot write dot csv okay and i'm specifying the path here users it varsity research data order item and let me run getting started now let me go here it's it varsity research order items as it already exists it is it have failed so i need to delete this now let me run it the reason why i'm saving into file is that way it is easier for me to explain how the data is distributed using this lower bound and upper bound okay the way it will be distributed is as we have specified as four buckets okay so data will be divided like this 12500 15000 17500 okay and then 20000 okay the beginning is one and ending is in our case we have up to 68883 you can consider as uh, 68883 is the ending so now when you have number of partitions as four and with lower bound as 10000 and 20000 if you are familiar with scoop it will ignore all the data before 10000 and all the data after 20000 but whereas with spark it works a bit differently even though they call it as strides and even though there are four strides such as 12500 and then 15000 and then 175000 and then 20000 the second stride will be between these two values and it excludes the 15000 as part of the second stride so it will be from 12500 till 14999 as part of third stride it will copy data from 15000 till 
फोर नाइंटी नाइन ओके नाउ कम्स फर्स्ट वन एंड फोर्थ वन सो वेन इट कम्स टू फर्स्ट वन इंस्ट ऑफ कॉपिंग डेटा फ्रॉम लोअर बॉन्ड विच इज टेन थाउजेंड टिल ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इट एक्चुअली कॉपी डेटा फ्रॉम वन so it will be hard coded with one because the column which you are supposed to specify here to divide your data into multiple strides is only numeric type and it always starts with one and then the upper limit of your first stride which is nothing but 12499 so as part of the first stride data from 1 to 12499 will be copied and as the as part of last stride data from 17500 it actually can say greater than or equal to 17500 and whatever data that is there above 17500 will be copied in the fourth uh, bucket now if you look at the output okay if you go into order items here you can see your first file is of size 937 kb and your fourth file is 4.1 mb but the middle ones are very close and they are very even approximately 190 kb and if you look at the data i am opening with sublime text here so open with and then other you can see that the second field is order item already you can see that the first file contains data starting from 1 and then if i go to end it went up to 12499 okay and if you look at the second second one it contains from 12500 till 14999 and if you look at the last one it contain all the data above 17499 you can see here starting from 17500 it went up to 68883 so this is how data will be distributed when you specify lower bound and upper bound the sole purpose of lower bound and upper bound is just to address a skew not to eliminate the outliers so this is how you can actually leverage the additional arguments uh, this spark.read.jdbc takes and control the behavior of reading data over jdbc on top of this you can also read data over jdbc from a query not just table but a query okay and the way you can pass query is something like this for example let's say i want to get order item order id and then sum of order item subtotal which is nothing but order revenue this is alias for this field okay and then let's say group by order item order id you have to put the entire query in circular brackets like this okay and also you have to give the alias to this query the reason why we have to do this is whatever you are passing here it will wrap into another select query when spark actually try to get, fetch the data so if you just give the table name such as retail db dot orders it will actually issue query into the database by saying select star from retail db dot orders okay if you want to give a query and if you just give query like this then it will be something like this which is not valid in mysql syntax so it is saying select star from select blah 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 so the valid syntax is you have to enclose it in a circular brackets like this and you have to give alias and that is valid in mysql and that's what we are passing here okay that's why you have to enclose the query in circular brackets like this and also you have to give alias for some databases alias might not be mandatory but i think for mysql alias is mandatory now once you do this you can actually say order items dot show to preview the data and you can run it you can see we got revenue for each order id after performing sum if you want to perform round you can actually use round function also you can run any valid query and it works fine that is about reading data over jdbc which is very very important and i have heard about lot of companies are actually moving away from scoop and using spark or jdbc to read the data there is no out of the box solution and by understanding this fundamental concepts you should be able to automate by by developing the code to load whatever tables you want and process as part of your data processing modules where copying data from a remote database is involved